wait for the bell to ring. By the time he was eight years old, he had lost five siblings. At nine, he was left for dead, only to awaken from a coma paralyzed. But he recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of body and mind. Bradley Quick is here to share with you his path from Skid Row junkie to successful talk show host, author, mentor, and motivational speaker. If you're looking for a better tomorrow, if you want a positive evolution, or if you're in need of a quick fix, you're in the right place. Now kick back and get ready for the top experts in the field of body, body mind, and soul. Here on The Quick Fix with Bradley Quick. Purpose, power, motivation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Quick Fix here on Cool Change Radio, your home for positive answers and the place for you to find that life and health solution you've been looking for. We're right here right now to inform you to the latest life enhancement techniques in many different areas, including health, fitness, nutrition, psychology, finance, weight loss, and a whole variety of other wonderful and life-empowering topics. Today's show is brought to you by the Cool Change Foundation. If you're fond of our show, if we brought you some breakthrough solutions, or you just want to help us stay on the air, please donate today. Come on, think about it. Make life better for you. We make life better for the kids. We make life better for the kids. We make life better for the family. Everybody wins. It's a win-win deal. Make the family better. Make the neighborhood better. Make the neighborhood better. Make the town better. Make the town better. Make the city better. Donate now at www.thecoolchangefoundation.org. That's thecoolchangefoundation.org. Hey, remember, it's time for Cool Change with the Cool Change Foundation. Welcome, everyone. My name is Bradley Quick. I'm here, as always, to discuss solutions with you. I'm here to talk to you about having a better life experience and becoming the best you that you can be. Our guest today, we're fortunate today, Rob Grad, a singer, songwriter, painter, and photographer. He's here to talk about his story and learning to see ourselves in a new light. Hey, Rob, you ready for a great show? I am ready for a great show. Ah, great. <laughs> Sit tight. We'll be right with you, okay? All right, thank you all for joining us on CoolChangeRadio.com, BradleyQuick.com, and on Facebook.com. As you know, you can catch our live and recorded video shows and interviews on those sites and many other websites. And as always, you can listen to our archived audio interviews, hundreds of them, your favorite topics, favorite experts, and favorite personalities at BradleyQuick.com. And if you're not hanging out on CoolChangeRadio.com, BradleyQuick.com is definitely the place to be. Later, our buddy Paul Madrano, former Mr. Universe, will be here with us here talking about fitness and healthy living in our Getting Fit with Mr. Universe segment. It's all going to happen shortly, so stay right where you are. Now, make a note. If you'd like to chime in with a question for my guest today, oh, well. No, no you can actually go to Cool Change Radio on Yahoo Instant Messenger. Yeah, got that? Add Cool Change Radio, all one word, Cool Change Radio on Yahoo Instant Messenger, and we should be able to get that if we're lucky. We'll answer it for you right here in the studio. Okay. As a solo artist, his original songs have been featured on a variety of TV shows worldwide. And he recently released his first solo CD called No Apologies, where he says it reflects a time when he was forced to reevaluate his life due to personal crisis. Joining us now on the Quick Fix here on the Cool Change Radio and TV Network is singer, songwriter, painter, photographer... Rob Grad here to talk about famous to not so famous. Hey, Rob, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bradley. So good to be here. Dude. It's so wonderful. It's not often awesome. we get superstar guys like you. <laughs> what was it like being a long-haired, hippie-type, pinko guy? It was awesome. I mean, I, uh, what can I tell you, man? I mean... We're talking about lights. We're talking about yeah, red carpets. We're, we're talking, talking about limousines. We're talking yeah, about... Yeah, yeah we're, you know, we were, I was in a band... Um, you know, we came up on the Sunset Strip when the uh, Sunset Strip was the Sunset what, Strip. What, you know? year, what year was that? This was like early '90s, late '80s. Okay. So this was, you know, um, you know, Motley Crue and all those bands uh -huh. had already sort of exploded out of there, and sure. we were part of that next wave. And Led Zeppelin had exploded out of there. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah they, I got <laughs> Richard Cole, a buddy of mine, they were their former road manager. And He's he, a buddy. Yeah, he tells me oh that uh, they uh, uh, would. Not do a last call if they had a chance to get in the airplane, get to the Roxy. Mm, I mean, get to the really? get to the Rainbow. On the oh, yeah, the Rainbow yeah, had yeah, everybody yeah. in there. You know, we used to go in there. Yeah, it was, it was a great time. You know, I mean, yeah, it's Mario, amazing. Mario bought the place in the early seventies. Yep, yeah, I met Mario. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah we used yeah, to. Sure. Yeah, it was a great time. You know, it, it was interesting because I didn't. I was very young. Uh -huh. You know, it just all happened like literally out of high school. Out of high school. Wow. Yeah. You know, so we were down like. So you weren't even 21 yet and you're out doing. Yeah. No, I was. Uh, we had a record deal with RCA Records before I was 21. Wow. So it was. It what, all just happened. You what know? did that do to your ego? 
Um, Come on. It, it, it was very confusing time. It was very confusing stuff. I was totally unprepared for it. It, it, it does change things. It does make the water very murky, you know? Um, uh, so as far as the ego goes, absolutely, you know? It, it, but I, I, my experience, my brush with fame at that uh, time uh. is very much like fame is like money. You know, it'll bring out whatever you have, whatever's buried deep inside, whatever demons or angels you got in the right, closet, right. they're all going to come out, you know. And and so we did some great stuff. But also, yeah, it was very. Um, here's a little tip. If you really want to be the center of attention in a rock band, I don't recommend playing the bass guitar. Right, like, you right, know, right. It's just your not the guy, you know, kind of, yeah. you know, like I, I did always, especially at that time, was very. um I had something to say. I still have something to say, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. and, and, and it was a, it was difficult for me to have somebody else singing those words and someone right. else, you know. But you were writing it all, right? Uh, I was, uh, I wrote a lot of it with the singer. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, you know. You doing backup vocals or anything? I did backup yeah, vocals. Yeah. In fact, we were, it was all the neighborhood kids that, we were, we grew up in Northridge and in, right. in, in the Lo San Fernando Valley here yeah, in Los like, Angeles. Yeah, it's like Van Halen, same type of Pretty story. much. Yeah, 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 I mean, we were literally the kids in the garage right, and right, we needed right. a singer. Um, we, we tried out... 80 something singers at the time wow. literally over a year's time and couldn't find anybody and then we finally and i actually thought to myself maybe i should learn how to sing because this uh -huh. is stupid yeah, you yeah, know yeah, like right. I, i'm tired of it and we met some of the craziest you know people so and then finally we met this guy and we hooked up with him and he was great you know so i was like okay i don't need to learn how to sing you know this guy can do it right and he and i got close we all wrote together you know and within, I think it was 18 months, we were signed, you know, and we started you've selling a lot, You've written a lot of good stuff. Why don't you tell us about some of the stuff you've written and it's been placed? Oh, well, okay. So a lot of the stuff that's been placed actually came later. So that, that band fell apart and... What band was that? What that band was that? called Kick Tracy. Kick Tracy, right? And we put out uh, an album and an EP on RCA. And then due to, like you said, sort of just ego issues and, and um, money issues... Right out of the box, you know. Right. Um, all of a sudden, as soon as money was involved, right, everyone sure. was like, "Well, I, you know, got to sure. make sure I get mine," you know, kind of thing. Right, Me, right, myself right. included, you know. So, um, and it, it just made everything difficult. And then it was a, a series of horrible decisions on our own behalf. Um, you know, I make this joke that we were like the the anti. You always hear the story of, "Oh, the record company screwed us over. It was right, the worst right. thing ever," you know. And actually, had we listened to the record company, we would have been in much better shape. Right, you know, right, we just right. continually shot ourselves in the foot. Yeah. And, but it was. Um, uh, unrealized expectations, and unrealized you know it was a lot of disappointment and everything. And, and we broke up right before we were go back, going back in the studio to record uh -huh. a second album. Um, and I was like, okay, that's it, no more singers. I'm done with singers because right. I don't want to deal with them anymore. I'm writing my own stuff anyway. I should be my own mouthpiece, basically. So I learned how to sing, and and um, you know. It felt really natural once I got into it. I loved so it. So it wasn't. It wasn't. You didn't fall. You didn't fall apart when the first band broke up. It was when the second band broke up. I fell right? apart a couple times. Yeah. yeah, I fell apart after the first band broke up. I was. I hit the ground kind of running, but uh -huh. I was a little bit limping, I should right, say. Right. And then, um, and then she left. Oh God, and, that's uh, the worst. And that's when the bottom fell out. That was a really. Um, I had that was one a hard those. time. I had one of those. Yeah, I'm sure. bye, bye 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 bye. I just lost everything. Couldn't do anything. What? It, yeah. Yeah, that, and that's what it was. Totally debilitated. I I didn't, you know, leave much. I actually started working. Um, my stepfather owned a book publishing company, uh -huh. and I was in his warehouse packing boxes. And my mom called me one day, and she said, um, and I, I actually became a little suicidal at that point, you know, because I just felt like, now what? You yeah, know? it's and all over. So I wasn't showering or anything. My mom calls me one day, and she goes, I don't know how to tell you this. I was like, what? You know, she goes, um, the women at the office had kind of been complaining a little bit. Oh. And I was like, what? She goes, well, you smell. And I was like, oh, my God. You know? Uh, all right. That was a, a light went on at that right. point. I was like, you know what? That's really sad. You know, if your mom's calling because you got B.O., you right, know, right, and, right. and people are complaining at the office. Right. So, that you know, I showered up and I started to kind of, and that's when I started singing. And I said, I'm going to do my own thing. And, you know, this idea of seeing yourself in a new light, you know, one, I... I I had to learn. To, I was just willing to suck. I was like, I'd rather sing and suck than have to go through this again. What I went through, so I just tried. You know, I gave it a try, right? And um, and I loved it, and it felt natural. And I started another band, and um, and those those songs start. We wound up on the TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh -huh. um, 
uh, which was really cool. We were actually on the first season, uh, so we were on the show during. We were like the band in the bar during the opening right. credits and right. everything, and and that was my first real song that got on TV. It still uh-huh. plays today. It's amazing. You know, they didn't even know at the time it was going to be a hit show. Um, and then it was, and it still syndicates. It's really cool, you know. That's so uh, I still get emails and stuff about it. Is, but, is it the title song? Uh, no, it's not the title song of the show. We were just like the opening credits on one of the episodes. So uh-huh. like, you know, you do the whole opening of the show, and then they cut to the first scene where they're showing credits, and people are walking around the bar, and we were on stage and playing uh-huh. my song. Um, it was called Already Met You, and it was this kind of fun, tongue-in-cheek song about... Um, you know, I already met you. You're like my last girlfriend, the right. ex, and the girlfriend I had yeah. before her. You know, so this idea of like repeating that pattern sure, and everything. Sure, sure. Happens all and, the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, unfortunately, we all know it uh, a bit well. But um, until you change yourself, you can't change what you attract. Well, yeah. And that's the thing. And especially in relationships, you know, it's one of those things where you're. It can, I was continually attracted to the same type of person, you know, and until that shift happened, it was interesting when that shift finally did happen for me. In relationships, um, I found that I was no longer attracted to the type of girl I, I was before. I would actually meet girls that, and I would feel that thing, and I'd be like, I used to think that was hot. Uh-huh. I totally don't right now, you That's know, and that funny. was a beautiful thing to have happen. Well, this is a great thing. I wanted you to tell, we're almost, the music's almost going to start. And All right. It's not one of your songs, it's one of my songs, but beautiful. it's okay with, it's going to start, and rather than talk to you while it's going, I'm just going to say we're going to be back okay that's probably a good idea is that a good that's idea brilliant i love how you run this place man <laughs> tight <laughs> really tight all right and we stay put if you got a habit you want to change how would you do things different to better your life experience how we just might have some insight for you so stay right where you are i'm here with rob grad a singer songwriter painter and photographer we're discussing life after having the taste of fame learning new skills getting past obstacles this is the quick fix on cool change radio we're broadcasting live from freddie siegel studios I'm Bradley Quicken. We'll be right back. Today, experience the Quick Fix, a simple process for positive change. Written by Bradley Quick, author, producer, motivational speaker, and host of the award-winning radio talk show, The Quick Fix, with Bradley Quick on CoolChangeRadio.com. Bradley's passion for life is evident in his book, written so you can experience health, find your purpose, and have more effective relationships. Beating insurmountable odds, overcoming death and being paralyzed, Bradley fought his way back so he could help you conquer your struggles. Experience increased health, vitality, passion, and purpose in your life right now with The Quick Fix and read about Bradley's courage, ambition, and determination to live. Whether the issue is your thoughts, your physical body, or you just want to feel better and be happy, The Quick Fix, a simple process for positive change, will change your life. For only $19.95 plus shipping and handling, take positive action now and receive a free guided meditation CD with your order. That's a $20 value free with your order today. Go to BradleyQuick.com. That's Bradley Quick. Dot com. Take control and begin feeling better now. Get the book and free CD now at BradleyQuick.com. You're listening to The Quick Fix with Bradley Quick. Purpose, power, motivation. We'll be right back. Have you been to years of counseling and therapy only to realize that you're pretty much the same? If you're tired of reliving old patterns and convincing yourself that you're changing each time when you're really not, I've got someone that can definitely help. Meet my buddy, Dr. Kevin Fleming of Gray Matters International. He's got some innovative coaching solutions just for you. He's a former neuropsychologist turned life coach for the purpose of helping you better your life through science and personal coaching. It's always better to have a coach. Just ask your favorite star athlete or executive. They'll tell you getting coached will take you to the next level and beyond. Dr. Kevin Fleming today. Call him at 877-606-6161. That's 877-606-6161 for a free consultation. He's on the phone for you at 877-606-6161 for your free consultation. My buddy, Dr. Kevin Fleming. All righty, everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to Quick Fix here on Cool Change Radio, your home for self-improvement and a place for positive change. I'm Bradley Quick, and we're right here right now to help you gain the upper hand and become all that you want to be. This segment is brought to you by GapZip.com. They say they ask you, how do you think? They say how you think is more important than what you think. It's one of those chief reasons why many of you get stuck when you try and take the next step in your career or personal relationships. I'm going to be joined by the two dynamic guys from GapZip.com who actually teach people how to think. One was a monk for 35 years, and the other one of the world's most famous strategic thinkers and innovators. So tune in with, you, with us here March 28th to learn how to think in a new way. All right, until then, go to GapZip.com. That's G-A-P, 
ZIP.com. For those of you just joining us on CoolChangeRadio.com, Facebook.com, or BradleyQuick.com, welcome. You can listen to this show again at hundreds of hours of other self-discovery content anytime you want by simply going to www.bradleyquick.com. You can also sign up for our weekly radio show email reminder, which uh, will take you to the most recent interviews in the comfort of your own home or office, and you can listen at your convenience. Make sure not to miss your favorite authors, experts, or personalities. You can also podcast any of our shows or just listen to us anytime from anywhere at www.bradleyquick.com. All right, I guess today is Rob Grad, a singer, songwriter, painter, and photographer. He had his first record deal with RCA Records fresh out of high school as a bass player and a main songwriter for the band, Kick Tracy. He toured the country with Kick Tracy, playing shows with Bon Jovi, Joe Walsh, and many, many others. Rob, welcome back. Thank you. So good to have you here. Thanks, Where's your man. camera at? Where'd your camera go? My camera. My there, you, there you go. You're on camera now. There you go. Uh, <laughs> let me. Uh, so tell us more about... <laughs> I want to know, um, see, you, you had the band. You yeah. started writing the songs with, mm-hmm. with Kick Tracy, right? Yeah. And you got a record deal. Yeah. That's uh, 18 months after the band got together. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They... And uh, you started flying around and being a big shot. Kind of, yeah. You know, it was, um, when we we got a call one night. Um, we were kind of like, became popular around town here. Uh-huh. You know? And uh, we got called by a booker one night that uh, someone had canceled. At the Coconut Teaser, which is now closed. Coconut Squeezel. The Coconut Squeezer. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, uh, we went and played a six-song set that night. RCA and Arista Records were there. Um, a couple weeks later, they both approached us after the show. Uh, two weeks later, we were in New York. We showcased for Clive Davis, uh, who was with Arista at the right. time. Legendary Clive Davis. Uh-huh. And then um, and then we did a series of showcases for RCA, and we wound up signing with RCA. Um, it was... Uh, Amazing, you know. I mean, it, it's hard to say. Like, you're. I dropped out of college at that point. I'd been. I had registered for college, and I'd started going. Oh, it's rock star college. That exactly. You know, it was one. like one of the greatest <laughs> days of my life. I went into the administration, and I told the girl, I was like, I need a refund for next semester. And she goes, well, Why? You know, I said, I'm going to be a rock star. It's going to be great. You know, she she didn't even get it. You know, no, not even. so it was beautiful. You know, and at first it was awesome, and 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 but it just. Um, you know, once you get a taste of that, you know, it's like I was always about the the message and what I really wanted to get out with my music. Like music saved my life when I was a teenager. You know, I got I got into drugs. I was miserable. I was I had a very difficult time in teenage. And when I at first I joined the band just because the guys in the neighborhood were doing it. I wasn't writing anything. And then I, I, I didn't like the songs we were playing. So I decided to give it a try. And um, and I just found something in it. You know, it was a way to communicate in a new way that I, I was able to get things out I couldn't get before. And that's what it was all about in the beginning. And what happened was the the music became the day job. You know what I mean? It's like I was hoping so for so long to get that relief from the day job so I could just do this all the time. And then what happened was I, I, I wound up feeling like that was the day job. And that's when I started painting originally. I actually wow. picked up a paintbrush because I felt like I needed a creative outlet from my music job, which is ludicrous, you know. But it all became about business and money and... Um, the music business became all about business Our band and money, became yeah. about that. I don't think that it's necessary. I think in hindsight, and, and maybe had I been older or with the experience that I have now or whatever, like I could have seen that better at the time. And that was part of the being young did the, thing. Did the same, did the same uh, uh, plague inflict your, your second band? No, not in that what way. What was that called? That was super called Super Fine. fine. Yeah, yeah, Super Fine. Um, I did learn some lessons from the first one. You know, Super Fine was was more my thing, and um, we did have a band at, at, at a couple different points. And you know, right as we were uh, like getting interest and in getting the record companies were starting to come to the shows and all that stuff, we'd been on like I said, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, uh, and One Tree Hill, and a couple like a couple of a uh, whole bunch of them. There were a series of shows that some of the songs were on. And um, it it was uh, we were getting interest, and the bass player just quit one day. You know, he just and that, quit. Why, why did he quit? Honestly, I still couldn't tell you exactly. He just walked in one day and said, "I can't do it." You know, and we we're like, "Really? Now?" You know, uh, like uh, you couldn't have told this before. Like right. we're actually doing well now. Like before, we were sucking, and and you were into it. You know, like what happened? <laughs> so, um, you know, and I I wish I I wish that I'd handled certain things differently in both bands. You know, and I still had I think. I wanted it so bad at that point. You know, I just wanted to get back to where I was in a better situation, and I just couldn't get back there. 
So what? How, where did Superfine come in? Superfine, there was that it. That was it. That like was it, huh? with Superfine, I just wanted to get back to where I was with the first band. But this time I could be the singer. This time I was saying what I wanted to say with the songs. So I, what happened with Superfine? Did they get a deal? Did no, they, no. But well, we we got uh, we got offered an indie deal. We we did a seven inch single, which wound up being on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, some of the songs started uh, appearing in other shows and things like that. But then the guy quit, and then like it was like the wheels just came off, right, you know. And right. it was almost like, God, why? You and know, then you, then you came down with an undiagnosable sickness. So what happened is in the, in the, during this whole thing huh? near the end of it. Yeah. What happened was um, in order to make money, I had started doing a computer consulting job, you know, so um, I, I just always have been good with computers. I was good in school. You know, I was just I uh-huh. just came easy. I was one of those guys, you know. So um, I got I wound a luck literally just coincidentally lucky however you want to say it you know um i wound up with this job and and but i was still doing super fine and um the band had kind of fallen apart so it really just become my thing at that point and i was struggling with different members and i i just I, it was like i was trying too hard you know and 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 the music in super fine was very sarcastic and it, it really reflected a lot of my um angst about my whole situation with kick tracy my life disappointments a series of disappointments in my career and my relationships you know the girls weren't working out the career wasn't working out right and um and so what wound up happening is uh i just started getting sick i was at this job and all of a sudden i couldn't digest any food i started getting headaches i, I started getting severe pain all over my body um it was like allergy stuff but it was Total, so I started going to doctors one after the next. They'd give me like acid blockers for my stomach or, you know, things like that. None of which worked. You know, nobody could get to the bottom of it. And um, I had to seek alternative means to kind of go do that. I was doing acupuncture. I did whatever I could right. and it wasn't going away. You kept hitting the wall on this I kept thing, hitting huh? the wall. And what um, what finally wound up, I really had to take a look at my life. You know, I went to see somebody and she said, you know... Uh, yeah. You're just totally shut down," she said. You know, and, and I said, really? "I don't know. I don't. I'm not seeing it. You know, like I'm not getting it. Right. I, I feel yes. I don't feel as passionate as I used to about anything. You know, yes. I nothing feels quite right. You know, all those kinds of things. Like I could admit all that to myself, but I couldn't really admit that I was that far off and that far shut down. And she's like, "No, you totally are. I, I'm just looking at you. I can right. see it. You know, like." And so I really had to take a look. She goes, she said, you really need to think about whether you want to like go on with your life or not. And I was thinking, I felt suicidal before. This isn't that, you know, I've had that experience before and it scared me. Right. I didn't make that choice and I'm grateful I didn't, but I don't feel like I'm there now, but I was totally shut down. So what I wound up having to do was completely change my life. I had to get out of a relationship that I was in that loved her, you know, but it wasn't it. And I knew that, but I, we, we know we didn't fight. It was a good relationship and on paper, you know, it was almost like one of those things, like it was great on paper, but there was something that I just knew wasn't right for me. I had to get out of that. I had to, to start doing my music again and start really thinking about the motivations for writing songs and, and what I was doing. And it really was this whole reevaluation of my life that I had to, to go into. And amazingly enough, I left the relationship. I started doing some of the things that I really wanted to do that I had just, I didn't realize how much I'd shut out and I started to feel better. It just happened. His name is Rob Grad. He's a singer, songwriter, painter, and photographer. We're talking about getting over the obstacles in your life. uh, Once you, you know, then after doing that, you can find your passion and purpose. Uh, You can check him out at www.robgrad, R-O-B-G-R-A-D, robgrad.com, or email him at rg at robgrad.com, rg at Uh, robgrad.com. You now have, uh, what, three solo, you've you've done a bunch of solo stuff, right? I did one solo album, actually. It's right here. That's it? That's it. Go ahead. And, and it's called No Apologies. And that, a lot of those songs were written as I was going through that sort of healing process uh-huh. from the physical. Where do people get this? Um, you can get it on my website, just robgrad.com, like you just said. It's on iTunes. It's on Amazon. If you just search my name, R-O-B-G-R-A-D, you can find it. Um, and I started writing those songs as I was making that change. So a lot uh-huh. of these songs sort of reflect in different ways. Um 
overcoming, letting go, you know, of all these old ideas. I really had to let a lot of old ideas go about myself and what I wanted and and my perception of fame and money. Uh-huh. You know, I used to have this idea. It's interesting. Like we get these these deep-seated psychological beliefs sometimes that we get from wherever we get them, whether it be family, society, friends, whatever. And I really had to start taking a look at those. Like, I had this idea that if I wanted to be rich or famous, like, there was something shallow about that, you know? And... So you were fighting it and defeating it the whole time? Well, that's time? the thing, is it was underneath there. But yeah. I did want those things, you know, and I do yeah. want those things. And and it was... But I had this idea subconsciously. Let's and talk we, about more about the self-defeatism self-defeat, okay. here when we come back. And I also yeah. want to hear some of your music. Okay. All right? That'd be cool. Excellent. I see you did bring your guitar. Yeah, I did. That's a neat thing. All right? <laughs> right I like that. I like that. I like Hang in there with us, Rob. Right. Thank you. Hey, this segment has been brought to you by the guys at GapZip.com. They say thoughts are things. Thoughts lead to actions, which lead to results. So if you're sick and tired of your results, take a look at your thinking. They'll be here with us March 28th. They consult with celebrities and dynamic leaders all over the world. Gapzip.com. Hear the right here on Cool Change Radio, March 28th. This is uh, Cool Change Radio, as you know. Home for self-improvement and a place to shape your vision of what's possible. I'm Bradley Quicken. We'll be right back. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jumpstart, an awakening, someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. You're listening to The Quick Fix with Bradley Quick. Purpose, power, motivation. We'll be right back. I'm Melody Beattie, author of Codependent No More. Seven times more Americans have hepatitis C than AIDS. I'm one of them. If you're one of the millions of Americans with hepatitis C and your doctors are treating you with interferon, then you're clearly aware of how your life has been turned horribly upside down. Backed by huge pharmaceutical monies, the medical community swears there's only one dangerous, disabling way to battle this silent killer. It's not true. There are alternatives, and they work. Triumph Over Hepatitis C is a book written by best-selling author Lloyd Wright, who fully recovered from this frightening disease. Lloyd is helping others to take charge of their lives and fight for their body's freedom from this crippling illness. His program is working for me. Call the people at Hepatitis C Free now at 866-HEP-C-FREE. That's 866-HEP-C-FREE. Don't become another medical statistic. Find out the truth about Hepatitis C and get your life back. Get your copy of Triumph Over Hepatitis C at Barnes & Noble and at HepatitisCFree.com. Call 866-HEP-C-FREE. All right, welcome back. You're listening to Cool Change Radio, your home for self-improvement and a place to find your passion and purpose. I'm Bradley Quick, and we're right here right now to provide you with alternative solutions to the issues in your life. I'd like to share with you a great opportunity. You can join me, come with me, see me, visit with me down in Teotihuacan, Mexico this June. I go down there a couple times a year anyway and and stay at the Dreaming House, which was built by a friend of mine named Lee McCormick. It's at the base of the Toltec Pyramids. We we go uh, venturing off into the pyramids and explore the five portals of our existence. It's just absolutely amazing. It completely transformed my life to get into the energies and the different dimensions of life. I mean, it's really crazy. It really, really is. A great experience. You shouldn't live a life without having done it at least once. Go to www.spiritrecovery.com. That's spiritrecovery.com. Click on the Journeys link. And, uh, and heck, I mean, they just got back from Machu Picchu. Now, we'll be broadcasting live from their event at uh, Joshua Tree Forest here in Southern California called Soul Care. I think that's coming up in April. And uh, you can join us on the pyramids four or five times a year. www.spiritrecovery.com. Click on the Journeys link. Tell me you heard about it on the show. They'll give you a discount, I'm sure. And uh, join me down in the pyramids. All right? Much love. We'll see you there. All right, after Kick Tracy, he formed Superfine. 
an alternative rock band in which he sang lead vocals and played guitar. Superfine gained, gained an international following, but when they were featured on Buffy and the Vampire Slayer TV show and soundtrack, and they, they were just an amazing band, and they fell apart too. But joining us <laughs> once again is Rob Brad, a singer, yes, songwriter, did. and painter, photographer, <laughs> and he's here with us. He's got a new album called Apologies. No Apologies. No Apologies. What's, well, how'd you get that title? It's just uh, the idea is like not apologizing for who we are. And that's part of sort of what I was, I, I think, learning in my um, changing of uh, a lot of these old beliefs I was talking about. You know, and I, I want to say something about being the famous thing because you had asked about uh-huh. that before. And it kind of occurred to me, you know, I always had this sort of thing where I was trying to be good enough. I was trying to be in my own mind. I was trying to fulfill some sort of I finally OK. And the thing about f- my brush with fame at that time that all of a sudden you feel validated and it's like you're sucking on the nipple you finally get a little you know Uh and all of a sudden I, I just felt it was okay but the problem with that is when that's what your motivation is when that's what my motivation was it's never enough because it's trying to fill I mean it's it's a cliche but it's true you know it was just I couldn't get enough recognition you know and so it never felt like enough and and I and I, I think I pursued that in Superfine as well. I always wanted that thing, more. you know. I wanted. Well, what more. was the self defeatism that was in? Well, that's the thing is is if if and that that's not just wasn't just unique to you. That's no a, bunches of people absolutely subconsciously don't yes. think they deserve it or don't you know just self sabotage is huge. It took me years to actually realize that I'm good at what I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it seems so asinine and simple when you finally get it you know but any great epiphany is like that right. like all of a sudden it's just simple yeah, you and know you look back and go how come i never acknowledged this before yeah. you got to be out of your mind you know like <laughs> yeah. it's just totally you I mean you know i mean yeah. obviously with your, you you know i know you get it you know but so it was one of those things like i just kind of it, it i had to go through that process you know so with super fine i was still wanting that you know and then and then when I got sick, finally, it was like my body just I was it was basically a stress reaction is really what my sickness was in the end because right, it was course. undiagnosable. Yeah. No, I went to doctor after doctor. Nobody could right. do anything. And it was only when I started making those shifts and taking a look at those things about myself and on the CD, that cover that you just showed, uh-huh. um, that's a painting of mine. And I started painting in this that's process. That's a painting of yours behind yes. you or are you in the painting? That's um, that's my painting, the whole thing. Wow, that's ama- the painting's amazing. So I do use photography. It looks like a photographer. Well, I do photograph. use photography in the paintings, but they are paintings. Wow. Um, I came up with a special technique that I really haven't seen done before, and I've been doing that with a lot of my work. Um and I've had gallery shows and stuff. It's the last three, four years now I've been painting, and it's just been amazing. Robgrad.com, R-O-B-G-R-A-D.com, or you can email him at rg at robgrad.com. Uh, we want to play us a cut, don't you? Sure, I'll play a song. Which one, which one do you want to play for I'll, us? I'll play a song. I'm going to play a song called Be Good to Yourself um, that's on that CD. It, um, I wrote that near the when I had already started feeling better, I took uh-huh. a trip to Europe, and uh-huh. I'd never been. And right. someone suggested to me that I should go traveling. It was amazing, actually. She goes, she goes, tell me the first place that comes to your mind. Uh, Just close your eyes. What's right, the first right, place right, that comes right, to your right. mind? You know, and I close my eyes like, oh God, here we go. You know, and I, France. She goes, you got to go to France. Well, you got to be out of your mind. You know, yeah. really? Yeah. She goes, no. She goes, you got to break out. You got to. You have to get out of your comfort. You know, this isn't running away. This is. I was trying to finish the CD and I just couldn't get it done. And it was like, one more time, I'm just hitting the wall, hitting the wall. Life is throwing obstacles at me. Like, it wasn't, you know, it doesn't seem like my fault at the time. It didn't seem like my fault, you know. I couldn't find the right producer to help me get the sound or whatever it was. And those things were all true and all real. But the thing is, there was something internal in me that was still trying to prove that same thing to myself. And so she was like, you got to go someplace that's unfamiliar, and so that's why she did that exercise with me. So it took me three months to go. And what uh, what transpired in France? Something what, what I can't the... even explain. Like, l- literally, I had this experience when I went to Paris that was like, um, I walked, I, I so I went to London first, and then and then I took the train to Paris, and, and I, I, got, um, I w- got in the subway station, and I, I'll never forget it. And, I, you know, like you're walking, you're underground. So I was like walking uh-huh. down and you could see the light coming in from the top of the right, street right. and some stairs leading up and you can kind of hear the street noise uh-huh. getting louder. Sure. And um, I walked up the stairs. I took one look around and I, and I just threw up my arms like, oh, my God, I'm here. 
and I'm home. I felt more comfortable in Paris than I've ever felt in L.A., and I was born and raised here, and I wow. still feel that way when I go there. I really? can't even explain it to you. It was spectacular. So my CD was almost done. I had one song finished, one song to write lyrics for. It was, and it turned out to be the song "Be Good to Yourself." And I came up with a good chunk of these words right, while I was it. in Let's Paris. Play so, it. see if I can do yeah, this. Yeah, this is exciting. Here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like this. Here he is, Rob Grant. We okay on volume? Yep, we're okay. okay. All right. Leaving last December, but I just couldn't gather up the nerve. You always say life's what you make it, but you don't live that way yourself. So I'm breaking out because I can't take it one more day. Everything secure has come undone But there's a freedom in the middle of nowhere Where the sun's the only thing around And your shadow's not hanging out there on that road I know you've always had the best intentions looking out for me But I can't follow you or anyone else I gotta find my place And you can't do that for me Ooh. Be good to yourself That was great. That Thanks. was fantastical. Thank you. We like that. <laughs> right on. That was really good. Thanks, man. There you go. You got it? There yeah, we go. I think it was good. That's cool, man. That's wonderful. It was a great, great song. Thank you very much. And uh, you, when did you write that one? I wrote uh, the lyrics for that came um, <clears throat> when I was in Paris on the first trip. I was walking up by the river and I just got that whole like um, finally seeing with my own eyes, finally using my own eyes. What a great know? thing. Thanks. His name's Rob Grad. You can go pick up that album. It's called uh, No Apologies. And uh, you get that on iTunes or uh, his website, which is www.robgrad.com. That's robgrad.com. And you can email him if you've got any questions uh, at rg at robgrad.com. Absolutely. rg at robgrad.com. Thanks, man. This has been a great show. Thanks, man. So good I, to be here. I hope you'll, you'll come back or at least play us a song before you leave. Right? I would love to. You know, but i got to get out of here and go to Mr. Universe now. <laughs> Right on. <laughs> Unless you want to help me kick his butt. 
Oh, no, he's pretty big. I'm a pretty skinny, yeah. scrawny little guy. I don't know. I love it. Give well, my shot. Thanks for being here. Promise me you'll come back. I would love to, man. I really it, appreciate it. It's really being a here. great, great thing that you're here, and I just it's been my pleasure. Oh, mine too. Thank you Thank very, you. very much. Oh. Very, very much. Thanks, all right. Bradley. All right, everybody, stay put. You're in the right place. Cool Chain Radio would like to welcome all our new talk show hosts. Got a bunch of them coming. Stay in touch with us here on CoolChangeRadio.com and find out the time and schedules for everybody. We're coming back with our Getting Fit with Mr. Universe segment. My buddy Paul Madrano. I'm Bradley Quick. You listen to Cool Change Radio. Go home for self improvement here on your Solutions Radio Network. We'll be right back. Get quality goods for less from Bag City, serving all of Reno, Denver, Las Vegas, Bakersfield, Salt Lake City, Los Angeles, and many more cities. Up to 70% below retail on everything. Coin purses, wallets, organizers, purses, briefcases, backpacks, traveling garment bags, and ladies' and men's leather jackets. All discounted, all up to 70% below retail. Bag City, the best for less. Bag City, serving all of Reno, Denver, Las Vegas, Bakersfield, Salt Lake City, Los Angeles, and many more cities. Contact Bag City at 818-990-1795. That's Bag City, quality goods for less money. Bag City, where 15% of all sales go to local charities. You can't beat that. You help local charities while getting quality goods at up to 70% below retail. Contact Bag City now at 818-990-1795. Contact Bag City today and get quality goods for less money. That's 818-990-1795. Shop Bag City to save. Shop Bag City for charity. Bag City, 818-990-1795. You're listening to The Quick Fix with Bradley Quick. Purpose, power, motivation. We'll be right back. Today, experience The Quick Fix, a simple process for positive change. Written by Bradley Quick, author, producer, motivational speaker, and host of the award-winning radio talk show, The Quick Fix, with Bradley Quick on CoolChangeRadio.com. Bradley's passion for life is evident in his book, written so you can experience health, find your purpose, and have more effective relationships. Beating insurmountable odds, overcoming death and being paralyzed, Bradley fought his way back so he could help you conquer your struggles. Experience increased health, vitality, passion, and purpose in your life right now with The Quick Fix and read about Bradley's courage, ambition, and determination to live. Whether the issue is your thoughts, your physical body, or you just want to feel better and be happy, The Quick Fix, a simple process for positive change, will change your life. For only $19.95 plus shipping and handling, take positive action now and receive a free guided meditation CD with your order. That's a $20 value free with your order today. Go to BradleyQuick.com. That's Bradley Quick. Com. Take control and begin feeling better now. Get the book and free CD now at BradleyQuick.com. Hey, welcome back. Thank you all for joining us here on CoolChangeRadio.com, Facebook.com, and BradleyQuick.com. As you know, you catch our live and video recorded shows on CoolChangeRadio.com and over 700 hours of my best audio interviews, your favorite topics and personalities at BradleyQuick.com. As you all know, this is Cool Change Radio. We're broadcasting live from Freddie Siegel Studios. We're your home for self-improvement and a place for positive life enhancement. I want you to know we're being supported in large part by one of my favorite charities, the Cool Change Foundation. The foundation was created to help families, all the children in those families. They do that by providing positive transformational life enhancement methods and techniques to those children's caretakers, usually moms and dads, so they may overcome negative habits and become better role models and providers for the kids. As a direct result, the children's home and family life becomes more nurturing and loving. You can help the Cool Change Foundation help the mom, dads, and kids in your community, and you can do that right now. Simply send your donation of love and support directly to the foundation at www.thecoolchangefoundation.org. That's thecoolchangefoundation.org. Once there, simply click on the support us link at the top of the page and you'll be helping us help the children. That's thecoolchangefoundation.org. Click on the support us link and help us today. Every penny counts. No donation is ever too small and the children need your help. From all of us here at Cool Change Radio, we thank you for your support. Now, here we're going to get ready for my buddy here, Mr. Paul Madrano, former Mr. Universe, 1999. Here he is right now, Paul Madrano. 